There are seven comedians that perfectly represent the seven heavenly virtues, starting with the virtue of humility. Humility can be described as the quality of being humble, characterized by modest behavior, selflessness, and the giving of respect. And Bill Burr is a comedian who has demonstrated this virtue throughout his career. Bill Burr has achieved many great milestones as a comic. He created an animated TV show about his childhood on Netflix, performed on Saturday Night Live, and he even hosted the Grammys during COVID. But despite all these accolades and all the fame he has, Whenever he's on a podcast, he doesn't worry about appearing perfect. Instead, he's open about his flaws, and he often shares his struggle with his temper and loneliness. Fatherhood made me have to figure myself out because I didn't want my kids to go through, you know, some of the stuff that I went through. Not saying it was all bad, but some of the stuff that I went through. So um, I just kept trying and failing with the temper and uh, ended up taking mushrooms. You took mushrooms to I help you with your temper. Then after that, I was sort of le left with this uh, profound sense of loneliness. Bill's humble beginnings are the root of his humility, and the reason why he tends to favor underdogs whenever he appears on Kill Tony. Many people relate to him simply because he was once a regular person, and he will always remember where he came from. Uh, well, well, yeah, but didn't you kind of fuck him with the music on the way up? You know, yeah, like, he's gonna suck. It's just, you put it in for his mood. It's like, can we fucking, can you give him a chance? That doesn't happen to any... We've had this. He we've fucked had you before you got up here, man. That's, you get a mulligan on that one. But this isn't all. Bill has also shown his humility when on stage through his self-deprecating comments. Instead of trying to pick out crowd members and make jokes about them like other comedians do, Bill remains humble and aims all jokes at himself. So you wouldn't want to draft a guy like me. I'm a comedian. I'm useless. I'm a coward. I don't like confrontations. So I don't know what the hell to do, you know? Cause it's like, I really want to help her out, but I don't really know how to fight. So what am I going to do? I'm going to walk down the end of the train. Five seconds later, I'm going to be going, ah! We go up my neck, ah! I was just trying to help. And I realized I was too stupid to run a business. You know what I mean? I just knew I was never going to be that guy in like, you know, in the big office big long table going, we know we, in the fourth quarter, we need to increase, increase production, okay? Kathy, you're using a little bit too many paper clips and we need to just kind of tone that down, I'm not singling you out, we're just kind of... Similar to Bill Burr's humble beginnings, we have the next comedian that perfectly personifies diligence, which is defined as an attitude of constant and earnest effort to achieve something regardless of any distractions and pitfalls that may occur. The comedian who represents this best is Shane Gillis, who has worked his way up from the very bottom to be where he is now. Shane didn't have a Hollywood background to boost his comedic career like many other comedians did. Instead, he had a failed college football career and no life direction when he started his comedic journey. Shane began doing stand-up at open mic nights in front of drunk crowds in bars, while washing dishes on the side to pay the bills. For the first two years, he struggled to make audiences laugh, as he often made mistakes in any way possible, including holding his mic too far away so he couldn't be heard and misreading rooms by just making bad jokes in general. However, Shane worked through this and continually refined his craft and tried everything possible to improve. Shane was also willing to risk it all as he made many brave moves in an attempt to land himself in the Big Apple. And once in New York, Shane managed to impress SNL and become a member of the cast. However, just before making his debut appearance, he was removed from the cast for an old racist joke he made towards Asian people. Despite this major setback, Shane continued and he worked his way up to become a great stand-up comic by continuing to refine and improve his craft. Due to his great diligence, he's recently made it onto SNL and rejoined the cast. His live performance has over 5 million views as of recording. We, uh, my family and I, we actually we opened a coffee shop in my hometown for people with Down syndrome to work at. And uh, it's going, don't clap. <laughs> I didn't do it for the claps. I did it, uh, you know. It's going exactly how you'd think it would go. It's doing well, actually. Lying around the corner every day. Not because there's like a ton of people going, but service is... <laughs> Everyone's getting apple juice. We don't know how to fix that problem. <laughs> Another comedian whose comedy specials often surpass 5 million views is Joe Rogan, who perfectly exemplifies the virtue of charity, which can be defined as a willingness or desire to help others in an attempt to better the world no matter the cost to one's personal self. Joe's heart for charity does not apply to the typical system of donating to a mega charity and letting them deal with the money. Just like in most other realms of life, Joe is very skeptical about it. These guys that are involved in charitable organizations, the, the thought behind it is beautiful 
beautiful. Like, wouldn't it be great if people donated all this money to charity and we could fix a lot of things? But what you're really doing in a lot of ways is you're pumping up the business of these charities. And then they pump up their advertising revenue, they pump up their social media profile, their campaigns, their this, their that. And then they get co-opted. They get co-opted by companies, corporations, pharmaceutical companies, <laughs> different mandates and narratives that they'd like to promote. And next thing you know, charitable organizations are a part of the propaganda machine. Joe has consistently used his massive platform to support a variety of charitable causes throughout his career, including both direct and indirect donations to raise awareness for various causes via his popular podcast. A perfect example of this was when Joe donated and raised awareness for Justin Wren, who he invited onto his podcast many times to promote the fight for the forgotten movement that was aimed at providing a safe and dignified place for the displaced Batwa people from Uganda and surrounding tribal communities to allow them to heal, grow, and thrive. Another example is Joe's participation in the fundraising events for the Navy SEAL Foundation. Joe's collaboration with Kill Cliff, a brand that has been a significant supporter of the Navy SEAL Foundation since 2015, helped raise over a million dollars to the cause through cash donations, event sponsorships, and product donations. Joe's involvement with Kill Cliff includes promoting products like the Flaming Joe Energy Drink, which has helped raise awareness and funds for the foundation. On top of Joe's charitable work, he also supports his comedic friends by allowing them to appear on his podcast or be the opening act at one of his comedic specials. And he even gave Lex Friedman, his biggest competitor, one of his most cherished possessions. Take this. That's yours now. That That's an Omega. And that has a moon phase. You see really? that moon in the bottom of it? Keep That's yours. That's yours. You see the moon on the bottom of it? Do you see that? This is a happy man right now. That's my watch. Charity can also be likened to kindness, which is defined as the act of being helpful to others without expecting anything in return, not for personal gain, but purely for the benefit of the person being helped. And Theo Vaughn is the comedian that perfectly portrays this. Theo made a name for himself by being very kind to people who have called him on his podcast, and has essentially been acting as a free counselor to some guests. Man, I appreciate your honesty here. Uh... Yeah, look, I had a non-addictive, I had a non-addictive nasal spray that I had for a while that um, I sometimes I pull up if I was going to a bar or something. I'd do a hit in each nose before I go in. It didn't even do anything to me. It gave me a little bit of a flashback of probably doing a drug or something, you know, and just kind of heighten my senses in a, in, a, in a weird way. Or, um, but yeah, man, I, I'm sorry that you are so mean to yourself. This has allowed fans to appreciate his genuine care for each and every one of them, and this has allowed him to build a loyal following of real fans throughout his career. And this is not an act, since Theo has proved this many times. I would say ask her out. No matter who she is, whether she's a job or a new city, or, or an actual person. You know, whether, whether she's... Uh, an opportunity or a fear, you know? If you're afraid of heights, ask her out. Hey, heights, what you doing tonight? Even though I recommend doing heights during the daytime when you can see what's going on, but you know, like whatever she is, man, ask her out. On multiple occasions, he's dedicated entire shows to answering fans' questions and going into depth about how he overcame some of the problems they're currently facing. To everyone's delight, Theo shows excitement once he's able to help his fans, and you can clearly see the joy he feels when he's improved a fan's life. Another comedian that's improved many of their fans' lives is George Janko, who, with his fiancée Shauna Della Rica, perfectly exemplifies the virtue of chastity, which is the quality of refraining from sexual activity that's considered immoral or sexual activity altogether. Together. It also means complete fidelity to a husband or wife during marriage. Whilst George may not be the traditional comedian, since he's more known for his YouTube videos and being on Logan Paul's podcast, he does perform live stand-up comedy, and still pursues a full-time comedic career. George is a devout Christian, unlike most comedians, which explains how he abstains from many frivolous sexual relationships, allowing him to focus on his career and truly love his fiancée. George had to learn the hard way, as he was once fornicating freely, and even with his girlfriend, he does have premarital sex which he is open about they go oh like you're 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 having sex without marriage you're like blah 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 like yeah it still affects me there's if i'm gonna be open about it there's times where like me and her won't do it like we'll like 
we'll like fast or we won't we won't we'll give it up and then and then dude i'm a dog so sometimes the dog comes out you know mm -hmm. but again it's just my relationship but i am trying my absolute best i am working at it i'm doing the best that i feel like i could be doing this has made fans respect George even greater, and has helped him build a strong bond with his viewers and may have even welcomed some of his Christian fans into the world of comedy. Hopefully, George's actions leave a positive influence on his fans similar to how Dave Chappelle, who displays the virtue of temperance, would have affected his fans. Temperance can be described as emotional restraint or self-discipline, and is the skill of moderating one's desires, emotions, and attitudes, and Dave has shown this many times throughout his career. At the very peak of his career in 2005, Dave was offered a substantial $50 million contract to create another season of The Chappelle Show. However, once Dave considered the non-financial factors, such as the time spent away from his kids and the grueling work hours, he turned down one of the biggest comedian contracts of all time, and decided to move to South Africa to get as far away from Hollywood as possible. Despite this great example of temperance, Dave wasn't always like this. Very early on in his career, he found himself going to the strip club as early as 3pm on random days, because he had nothing else to do. This shows Dave had to develop temperance over his career as he grew older and became a better comic. It's safe to say that it has served him well, as many more people now respect him. Walking away from a mega contract like that and choosing to just do what he truly wanted, despite the mass sums of money being offered to him, is a great display of temperance. However, this did not stop Dave's love for comedy as he continued to perform stand-up, but now it was on his own terms. Pulled up on 6th Street, it was my birthday, I was riding with the guy, he's like, what do you want to do for your birthday? And, you know, at that time, I wasn't drinking or smoking or anything. Uh, I said, I want to do stand-up. And I found a bar. It was, it was right around closing. And I saw the DJ packing up, and I said, can I use your microphone? And he recognized me, so he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went up there, and I just started talking shit. <laughs> Dave definitely had to be patient with himself over his career to develop temperance to the level he did, and he must have learnt it from the one and only Chris Rock, who has demonstrated astute levels of patience throughout his comedic journey. Patience is defined as steadfastly working toward goals, enduring trials, and calmly awaiting results without frustration or anger, which perfectly describes Chris Rock. Throughout his career, he has had to patiently refine and improve his craft over 40 years, and since the 1980s, Chris Rock has been committed to his comedy career. He has constantly had to adapt and refine his style to best suit modern day audiences and keep crowds laughing. You think kids were nice to Mark Zuckerberg in high school? Hey, Zuckerfuck! <laughs> Zuckerfucker mother, Zucker mother, Zuck, Zucker mother, Zuck, suck my nuts or Zucker mother, Zucker mother, Zuck, Zucker mother, Zuck a mother, mother, Zucker. He invented Facebook after somebody smacked him in the face with a book. Chris has also had to be very patient with himself, especially when you consider in 2019 he was diagnosed with a nonverbal learning disorder, which affects his ability to interpret nonverbal cues in social interactions. However, by far the biggest display of patience came during the infamous 2022 Oscar Awards. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Despite this, Chris, at nearly 60 years old, continues to carefully refine his craft and does not seem like he'll stop anytime soon. His patience has allowed Chris's greatness to truly come to light over his 40-year career. These seven comedians each personify one of the seven heavenly virtues, but if you want to see a deep dive into one of them, click here to watch.